It's a scene that makes Miles' mom proud, and one that three years ago wouldn't have happened. Like many kids, Miles Graham wasn't a fan of fruits or vegetables, but at nine, he was headed towards obesity. And a trip to the specialist revealed even worse news. We found out he was pre-diabetic, so I cried. I was horrified. We're just gonna Christina knew things had to change, but wanted to find a way that would involve her son. I mean, you might think there is no way that you can introduce these kind of foods because children sometimes, no, at least to me, that. look pretty stubborn. And you'll think, oh no, I'm gonna have to fight over food. Say, I don't like fighting over food, um, no matter what. So you turn it into um, a health lifestyle not a diet. My knife. And that meant learning or relearning how to eat. So Christina and Miles took special classes. She also limited his time in front of the television and made exercise part of both their lives. So what we're going to do But she also included a little bit of motivation, rewards. If he tried two thumbfuls of anything different, whether it be potatoes, scallops, boiled potatoes, potato salad, Again, with olive oil instead of fatty stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Anytime he tried something new, whether it be a new vegetable, two thumbfuls, and it would count as one tick on the mountain, one, one step of the mountain. And, uh, and he achieved, I think, about four mountains. So I was going broke. No, it was like big rewards at the top. Now we just need And to Miles' credit, he understood why he had to do it. Because I don't want to die when I'm 20. Do you think that's what would have happened? Probably, or even younger. But he also understood his mom couldn't do the work for him. I'm pushing the button. All right. Especially since she wasn't with him all the time. Hey, what do you do when you go to a party and they have lots of junk food? I try to limit myself to like five pretzels, a little slice of cake, and a few chips. Wow, that's good discipline. Is it hard? Yeah. Sometimes. It depends how good this stuff is. Yeah. Now at 12, Miles has not only lost the 25 pounds, but he's also been able to reverse the pre-diabetes. I'm extremely proud because, I mean, parents tell me. <laughs> They'll say, um, you know, he only had uh, one piece of pizza. He doesn't even know I'm looking. He will ask yep. for a smaller piece Atta of boy. cake. Ooh, He'll turn wee. down the cake. Um, pop. He'll say, water, please. Miles is a rare success story in a battle that childhood obesity seems to be winning, tripling in the last 30 years. Now one in four Canadian children are overweight or obese, but it's the growing health risks that most concern doctors. And not all children develop those health issues, but those that do have a higher risk of developing diabetes. Um, we've seen diabetes in children, which was something that uh, 30 years ago, uh, type 2 diabetes was only seen in adults, and in fact it was called adult onset uh, diabetes and now we see it unfortunately uh, in children as well and uh, they can develop other problems like cholesterol problems and high blood pressure um, as well as sleep apnea which is when you have some pauses in your breathing while you're sleeping. Dr. Catherine Morrison is associate professor with McMaster University and also runs a clinic for kids fighting obesity in Hamilton, Ontario. She says there's a real and growing concern that this current generation of children may have a shorter lifespan than their parents. We obviously don't know that for sure, um, but it is a worry because we know that with this number of children uh, developing the health consequences while they are children, uh, that that does not bode well for their uh, health as they move into middle age. Since the problem is so new, studies are ongoing in many areas. One found that a majority of obese kids have arteries of someone three times their age. Another is investigating whether kids could be set up for the problem inside the womb. Yeah, there's some really interesting work going on where we're looking um, at the health of the mom in the pregnancy. Uh, and we think that moms who have diabetes during pregnancy, um, that, that something that changes the way that the uh, baby develops in the womb and that this increases the risk of developing obesity and diabetes, in fact, in the child as they grow older. And that's really important because if we can improve uh, the health of mums, many mothers would be really enthusiastic.
All right. Miles' mother is a case in point. There you go. You her commitment to following the eating and exercise program from Dr. Morrison's clinic alongside her son was key to his success. Thanks, Mom. You're welcome. Yeah, I think it's really important that, that par uh, children learn not so much from what their parents say, but more from what their parents do. And we know that if parents are physically active, children tend to be physically active. If parents eat healthy foods, children follow suit, as well as other behaviors. But what else can parents do to fight the fat? Dr. Morrison gives three easy to follow rules. Reduce the, num the amount of sugar beverages that they're drinking, and that's pop as well as uh, juices, because sugar beverages don't send those same signals to the brain to tell you to stop eating. Um, and so we think that they have an impact on increasing weight gain. And sometimes they're pretty easy for families to change, to move to water, to milk. The second one that we um, work on is, is portion size. So we actually have a plate that we give to families and we encourage them to have a reasonably small amount of, of um, meat and of their carbohydrate if that's the type of eaters that they are. Uh, and about half the plate should be vegetables. And the third one is something we call the 20 minute rule. Um, where we take advantage of those signals that go from your tummy to your brain to tell you to stop eating, um, to tell children that, you know, you can have seconds, but you have to wait for 20 minutes um, before you do that. And we find that children, for the most part, get kind of bored and want to get on with other activities, and so they may eat less uh, than they otherwise would have. Another surprising tip is not talking about calories and weight loss. We don't discuss numbers of pounds or, or uh, measurements with children. We really focus on how to be healthy, how to eat in a healthy way, and how to be physically active in a healthy way. Uh, and, and that's really where our focus is, because that's what our biggest concern is, that we want these kids to move into adulthood as healthy, happy children. Dietitians like Carol Harrison are another great resource for families looking to change. One of her foremost recommendations is meal planning as a way to stay on track in the midst of hectic schedules. And it doesn't have to be a lot of work. It can be, again, just one meal ahead. So before they go grocery shopping, they could say to their children, hey, what do you guys want to have for lunch? And write out a bunch of lunch ideas. When you involve them that way, they're more likely to try the food. And just have a quick glance. What have you got in your fridge, cupboard, freezer that you want to use up earlier on in the week? And start to sketch out some meals. It really makes your week go that much smoother. And people find they save time because there's fewer trips to the grocery store, they save money because they're not eating out and ordering in quite as much, and then the foods end up being healthier as well. Making a healthy meal is one thing, getting kids to eat it is another. Most parents resort to nagging or bribery, but does it work? These are all pressure tactics, and I know the intention comes from a good place. You want them to eat those foods because you know they're important for a healthy diet. And when it comes to healthy body weights, we know that people that have lots of vegetables and fruits in their diet tend to have a healthier body weight as well. But really, in the long term, those tactics don't work. So what you want to do, again, is just role model, serve a variety of healthy, nutritious foods, and let the children choose and enjoy what and how much they want from the healthy choices that you've offered. An apple. And just because uh, you don't apple. nag doesn't mean well, you can't you know, entice them to eat healthy. Children do love to eat foods with their fingers, and so dips are a great way to pack more vegetables and fruits into their day, whether it's at snack time or at lunch time or even with a meal. So what I've got here is just a basic egg salad, which you can use for a dip for vegetables. You could also use pita wedges as well. This is some hummus here. A lot of people buy store-bought hummus, but if you're looking to save a little bit of money, it's very easy to make. You can find lots of recipes for making your own hummus. And you can also mix some vegetables into the hummus as well. You can add sweet potato that's been mashed and make a combination, sweet potato and hummus. You can oh, also puree. Idea. Yeah, it's quite tasty. You can also puree roasted red peppers and make a red pepper hummus combination. So you're dipping your vegetable into a vegetable. Oh, sneaky. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then here are some fruit dips. So this is very simple to make. Vanilla yogurt, take some frozen or some canned or even fresh fruit, puree it down and mix it half and half with the vanilla yogurt, and that's really yummy on its own even, <laughs> but especially with fruit. And this is more of a fruit salsa. And all I have here is some apples, which again are in season in the wintertime. I've added some chopped up frozen strawberries, maybe a tablespoon or two of honey, and you can dip some more fruit in that, or you can even dip some cinnamon uh, crisps that you can make, which basically are tortilla wedges that you've baked in the oven with a little brown sugar and cinnamon on them. Oh, it sounds delicious. I tried a little bit of that before we shot and said, oh, that was really good. <laughs> it is. It's <laughs> yummy. My kids love it too.
So how do you know if your child is overweight or obese? Your family doctor is the best resource because healthy weight in children varies by age, gender, and height. You can also check out our website for further tips and information at crossroads.ca.